Hello, this is Jared Nimi with a mini lecture on the Metropolis Hastings algorithm. Previously, we've talked about a desire to sample from a particular distribution whose density is f, and we mentioned a few different methods that we could use to sample from this distribution. The first is that if f is a known density, we can typically uh, simulate it directly using statistical software. Uh, if it's not, and we can find its CDF and the inverse of its CDF, then we can sample using the inverse CDF method. And finally, we talked about the accept-reject method, where we have a proposal distribution, we create an envelope around this target density f. All right, so if we cannot use one of these methods, uh, but we can at least evaluate f of x up to a normalizing constant, then we can use what's called the Metropolis-Hastings algorithm. Without further ado, we'll introduce the Metropolis-Hastings algorithm. So f of x is going to be our target density, and this could be unnormalized. We're going to assume that we have a current value, uh, xj. We'll see where that comes up in a second. And we have a proposal distribution that now might depend on our current value, xj. All right, so the algorithm then says, OK, the first thing we do is we sample a proposed value, x star, from our proposal distribution that may depend on the current value xj. The next thing we do is calculate what's called the acceptance probability. First we'll start with the term on the right side here, where here we have the ratio of the target density for the proposed value versus the current value. And then we multiply that by the ratio of these proposal density values, where here in the denominator we have the proposal draw that we actually did, so that is how likely was the proposed value given our current state. And in the numerator, we reverse that, and we say how, how likely would the current value have been if we were currently at the proposed value. All right, so the key here is that we just have to evaluate this ratio of target densities and this ratio of proposal densities. So we calculate that value. We take the minimum of that value and 1, this just ensures that our probability is a number between 0 and 1. And we call that number the acceptance probability of moving from our current value xj to a proposed value x star. So we're going to go ahead and accept the proposed value with that probability. So in this case, we're going to set the new value xj plus 1 to the proposed value x star with that probability. And if we do not accept it, we're going to go ahead and set the, the next value to the current value. This is very important and differs from the accept reject algorithm where we would just repeat the entire process. Here we do not repeat the entire process, we just set the next value equal to the current value. <clears throat> Alright, so I want to make a couple of notes about this algorithm. The first is that under certain regularity conditions, the sequence of random variables xj converges in distribution to capital X, where x has the density f. Right, so in the limit, as we do as j goes to infinity, we know that we're drawing from the density f. But hopefully it's clear here that the sequence xj is not independent. This again is unlike our previous methods, in particular unlike except reject. The xj's are not independent because they can depend both in the proposal on the previous value and they depend via the acceptance probability on the previous value. So this sequence xj is not independent, but nonetheless, under regularity conditions, we have a law of large numbers and the central limit theorem that says <coughs> that allows us to calculate the same Monte Carlo uh, approximation to the integrals that we've been talking about. So we can take our sequence xj, evaluate the function h, take the average over all of those values, and that converges to this expectation that we've been interested in, which can be written as this integral. <coughs> <coughs> all right, so that's the algorithm. I want to give a couple of particular examples. The first is known as the random walk metropolis algorithm, and this is the algorithm as originally presented by metropolis. And the idea here is that you have a proposal that's called symmetric. So it's symmetric if the probability 
about moving from xj to x and the probability of going from x to xj is equal for all x and xj. This proposal is called symmetric and it's convenient in the Metropolis-Hastings algorithm because in our acceptance probability calculation we have this ratio right here of proposal densities but by being symmetric those proposal densities cancel each other out and that part just becomes one and our Metropolis-Hastings acceptance probability becomes easier to calculate because now it is simply just the ratio of the proposed value to the current value. Alright, so notice that this means that if the proposed value has a higher density under uh, the target distribution than the current value does, we will always accept it. And if it doesn't, then we will accept it with some probability. Alright, so I'm going to consider an example now where we've, we've considered this example before. Here's a truncated normal. The untruncated normal has a mean of 5 and a variance of 9, but now we've truncated it to be between 1 and 6, and we're interested in drawing samples from this distribution. We've shown before we could use this to draw samples using the inverse CDF method, uh, but now we're going to go ahead and use this random walk metropolis method. Alright, so here is our unnormalized uh, target density and we're going to choose a random walk metropolis where the proposal distribution is just a normal distribution that is centered at the current value and has a variance of 1. To start the whole chain off we need to have an initial value in this case we're just going to have an initial value of 5. <clears throat> Alright so we go ahead and run this random walk metropolis and we get something that looks like this. Alright, so the key part here is the top left figure shows a bit about how the samples, how this chain, uh, these values xj, xj plus 1, xj plus 2 are not independent. Right here in particular, here at the end, we sort of get stuck at low values in that chain. Um, as we get more and more iterations, it's harder and harder to see that they're not independent, but in fact they are not independent. In the bottom row here, we have a sequence of, or we have a histograms of the samples that we actually drew, along with the curve of the true value. Right, this is the true, uh, now normalized density for this truncated normal. And we can see that with the only 100 iterations with this example, we don't do a very good uh, job of approximating this density. Uh, but as we gather more and more samples, we do a better and better job of approximating the target distribution of interest. Alright, so the second type of specific Metropolis-Hastings algorithm that I'm going to mention is called, is using an independent proposal. So now the proposal distribution does not depend on what our current value is. Alright, so we're going to call this independent. And in our Metropolis-Hastings acceptance probability, the, p the key piece that will differ is the piece right here, where now we still have this ratio of target dis densities, but now we have the ratio of the proposal density as, as well, which do not depend on any previous value because our proposal is independent. We're going to continue with the example we had before, and now we're going to choose as our proposal distribution here this normal with mean 3 and variance 1. Alright, so looking at similar pictures, um, we can see uh, here in this particular example, uh, we got stuck at a particular high value for quite a long time. Uh, as we get more and more iterations, that, uh, that getting stuck is harder and harder to see. But just like we saw before, at, with fairly low numbers, meeting the target distribution of interest, but as we get more and more samples, we seem to be doing a better and better job. So at this point, no effort was made whatsoever in these examples to... Uh, provide a good performing algorithm. They were just examples shown that the algorithm uh, does in fact seem to work. Alright, so in summary, this Metropolis-Hastings algorithm can be used to draw samples from a target distribution. Um, particularly you want to think about it when other methods don't work well. As mentioned, this method does not provide independent samples, whereas the inverse CDF and the uh, accept-reject algorithm will provide independent samples. 
So it's often better if you can to uh, produce independent samples. And so you should try those other methods first, but if you can't get those to work, then the, this metropolis Hastings algorithm uh, would be the way to go. Um, all we need to know is we need to be able to evaluate the target density up to a normalizing constant. And we need to uh, choose a proposal distribution. But unlike the accept-reject method here, we do not need to find a value m that envelopes the target distribution uh, based on this particular proposal distribution. So that's one advantage of using the Metropolis-Hastings as opposed to the accept-reject. All right, thanks.